Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the name of Jesus. Thank you for salvation we have in Jesus. And for the grace that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you because we have been made receivers, recipients of that grace. Not only that we have received, you have commissioned us that we should reach out and introduce and present that same grace coming from the Lord to the whole world around us. You are not only telling us to do it as adults, you are telling us to train up the children, the young people, so that they too, at their own time, in their own generation, to people like them, they will be able to reach out so that they will also teach other people, preach to other people, and present the Lord Jesus Christ to them. We thank you because of the children who in various places are already doing that. And we are praying, O oh Lord, you will open our eyes once again to see how we can train up the young ones, the children, and the youth, so that in their youth, they too will be serving the Lord in Jesus' name. We thank you for the ministry of the children here, especially the children choir, who has been presenting songs that are inspiring in the primary teacher section. Lord, we thank you because your hand is upon them already. And we know there are many of them who are not here, who in their own capacity are also serving you in various towns, in various schools, in various communities. We are praying, O oh Lord, you will multiply such children in Jesus' name. We thank you for the youth choir here. We thank you for the way they have been ministering in uh, this conference how uh, they are challenging our hearts inspiring us drawing us to the very presence of the lord we pray that your blessing will continue with them in jesus name we know there are young people like them in our various churches and various communities and schools who are serving you in various various capacities we're praying oh lord that those young people are already serving you now they will continue to serve you till they see you face to face in Jesus' name. We pray that uh, in our various schools, in our various churches, in our various communities, that you will raise up children like these children, who will serve you too and will be an inspiration to the adults, to the men, to the women, to their parents, and to the families in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord. That these children that have laid their hands on the plow, they will never look back in Jesus' name. As we are making use of them now, we pray that you continue to make use of them. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we look at your word today, you will really speak to our hearts. Help us to stand for the truth and to fulfill the role we need to fulfill so that we will impart something into the lives of children and young people to serve the Lord even at this time in Jesus name we bless your name because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray today we are looking at the we're having the message Timothy's training for God's service Timothy's training for God's service Timothy happens to be a well-known character to the New Testament churches. From the time he appeared on the pages of the New Testament, from the very first time, we see him to be a young individual. And from that time, he continued following the Lord, even though he was young. And we have many indications in scripture that Timothy was a young man, a youth, who was developed. And this development did not start when he met Paul the Apostle. The development, the teaching, the learning, 
the leading in the way of the Lord had started long before this young man ever met Timothy. And to us today, as we look at those that were used of the Lord in the New Testament, we cannot but speak about Timothy. So then, young Timothy was not a stranger to the churches in the New Testament period. Young Timothy is not a stranger to the churches of today. And right now, to the redeemed in heaven, young Timothy is not an unknown individual. And in all eternity, throughout eternity, the redeemed of the Lord will know that Timothy stood out as a young man, a youth who had been trained up from his childhood to serve the Lord. As we think about Timothy, we must not only give a credit to Timothy alone. That is, we must not give appreciation to Timothy alone, as if Timothy alone was the young man, the only young man in Bible days that served the Lord, that were trained, that were led, was led to serve the Lord. There were other young people too. And as we look at their lives throughout the Bible, they serve as encouragement. One, to the children and the youth of today, that if these children in Bible days were able to serve the Lord, then children of today, youth of today, they can serve the Lord as well. Number two, it serves as an encouragement to the parents who are Christians today that although that people will tell us in our local language that the path of children, the path of young people appears very slippery and it is very difficult for young people to walk straight without falling without sleeping, without backsliding, to continue consistently with the Lord. But as Christian parents, as they see the children and the youth in Bible days, and then we find out that these children served the Lord. What an encouragement to parents that their children too can serve the Lord. It's an encouragement to teachers because uh, teachers uh, sometimes have discouragement and the discouragement teachers have may be coming from different different sources our discouragement sometimes will come from the government circle because we see from what we see that the place of the teacher the place of the men and women who are raising up who are teaching, who are training young people, that their place is not reckoned with very much. That except we teachers go on strike to put it on record that we are being cheated, we are not being dealt with as uh, the government deals with other areas of profession. Except we talk like that and except we talk in the language a strike that the people in authority will understand they're not going to give us our right but those of us who are christians we can be encouraged that although men may not appreciate the great work we're doing in the training of children the work the service the ministry of trained children and youth in the bible they serve as encouragement to us because the product of those children of their ministry is something more than money and because of the things we're doing in the lives of those children and young people if men do not appreciate god recognizes what we're doing 
and he will reward what we're doing in jesus name and so it serves as encouragement to the teachers it serves as inspiration to the church many times you look at churches and uh, you discover that in many of the orthodox historic churches that the elderly people are the people that appear to be serious wanting to go to church wanting to read the bible wanting to do one thing or the other and it appears that in their own circles they are forcing children to go to church and they are forcing children to get involved but when we look at children in the bible the children that served the lord the children that made a mark in their own generation the children that touched the life of the nation the children that were significant in the history of their nation then it gives us encouragement today that it is not only those children that could be serving the lord or could have served the lord but that even children of today too they can serve the lord and we can prepare the younger generation for the uh, life or for the generation to come not only that as all these uh, children ministries training them for the service of the lord as it encourages us and it encourages the church and the parents and the nation then we think about the children themselves the children and the youth as they look at the uh, church those who come to church among the children and among the youth and they begin to think is there a place for me in the church because you see when our children and the young people when they look at the world especially now the world of athletics and they see how the under 23 that is the young ones who have not advanced in age either they are made into a team of footballers and they go to the olympics and then they win whether it is gold medal or they win bronze or they win silver or they win whatever it is and then the whole nation is uh, jubilating and everybody is making a noise in the night and they are shouting and shouting and everybody is talking only about these young young people and the whole nation feels that these young people they have done well to the nation they have lifted up the nation and they have gone over there to the olympics in atlanta for this 1996 and they have actually exalted not only nigeria but africa and then they came back and the government announced that because of these children youth will declare public holiday in honor of those children then the children in the church they also begin to think look at these people just to put that round rubber thing that is inflated with air inside and then to kick it with your leg throw it with your hand catch it with your hands fall down and roll down with it just to roll yourself in the mud they declare public holiday for them what's the church doing for us and so our children they see that they can do something more than table tennis something more than badminton and something more than cycling and something more than swimming and something more than kicking football and something that it is not just of a temporary value in the olympics but something eternally valuable if these children know that as the worldly people they are exalting and they are lifting up and they're encouraging their young people and they are spending much on them did you read the papers when those uh, before those uh, young people even came back there were people among them among uh, you know those who are done very very well 
and the people that love uh, sports here in the country before those children uh, those young people came back uh, they already seen uh, we give one million to each of them and then uh, before they came back niger state went ahead and said is uh, we are not just giving money we give land parcel of land to every member of that team think about those young people and uh, now they don't uh, they will think we don't need education anymore we don't need to study anymore what am i studying for because my teacher's teaching me in secondary school he doesn't have land in the village i have land in the state capital of niger state and uh, you know the money is there and when they came back they said we give you this we give you this we give you that and you know just spoil those children and stop their educational career because once money comes in i doubt if they are going to be able to seriously sit down and study mathematics because that subject is difficult and why are you studying mathematics so that you can you know maybe eventually become a teacher what are you going to get as a teacher maybe all of your lifetime as a teacher you may not get one million altogether and you are going to study mathematics until your brain is boiling and uh, now you've got all the money so you got the money before the mathematics so what do you do with mathematics throw it away and so now those children they are going to think there is nothing we're going to do with education because we've got everything we're looking for so what do you need education for actually we we'll spoil them but you know these children in our own church these children in the christian community if they see that as the world is appreciating the kicking of football we are appreciating the training of these children to serve the lord i believe that even for these children themselves and the church it is going to be an inspiration what do you think I said what do you think it's going to be an inspiration and that's the challenge we're throwing to ourselves as we come over here and we are doing the work of the Lord and we're encouraging our young people we're telling them there was a Joseph in the Bible he was young he served the Lord we're telling them there was a Samuel in the Bible. He was very young. He served the Lord. We're reminding these children there's a little Jeremiah in the Bible. He was young. He served the Lord as a prophet to the nations. We're reminding them there was a little David and he came and did what Saul could not do. He said, Leave Goliath to me. I will fight him. Because as young as I am, I was keeping the sheep of my father. And the bear came and I took him in the name of the lord i finished him another time a lion came you think i am young i know the lord you think i am young i fight with the wild beast you think i am young i know the power of god in my life you think i am young i can do all things through god the power of god that strengthens me you think i am young i can take on this goliath when that lion came i took him i blew his head off i killed him i removed that uh, sheep out of his mouth leave this man with me i'll finish him and when uh, this uh, man saw, saw little david was talking he said but you are young you cannot do this thing he said i will do it i'm telling you and then he put the armor big big heavy thing upon him and he he wore that thing he tried it he said you adults can use this one i have not tried this before let me do it the children's way you know the children's way those children they take that thing you call it a catapult or what okay they take that sling and then they put a little stone in it they see that bird there and they tell their young fellow we're going to eat this bird uh, this afternoon and they do this thing strike it finish and the bird is gone he said i have the method of the child the ministry of the child the training of the child i'm not trained like you saw like adult to wear that thing and carry that spear and carry that sword i'm not trained like that but i have the training of a child and that's all i know and then he took five stones 
and i want to remind you the word grace has five letters five stones five letters you understand it's the grace of god he said i come to you not in my power it's the grace of god those children they are what they are by the grace of god he said this very day the lord will give you into my hand and i will bring you down and all these hosts will know that the lord saveth not by sword or by spear but in the name of the lord i will conquer you and while that man was still thinking look at this little child how can they bring a little child to fight against me he threw that thing it sunk into his head and he came down we're telling our children we're telling our youth that they can do the same thing today i said they can do the same thing today where songs fear to go these children can go there where kings cannot reach if we train the children those children can reach those places and where adults are failed where adults are fearful the children if they are brought up in the way of the lord they can do it and they can go further than those adults and the lord is preparing preparing the children and the youth and we are now part of that preparation that by the grace of god our children they will serve the lord your own children they will serve the lord because you know what isaiah said i read it to you before in another message he said behold i and the children whom the lord has given me were for signs and wonders in israel your own children will be for signs and wonders your own students at school will be for signs and wonders and the children the young people in the place where you are helping them where you are teaching them where you're developing them they will be for signs and wonders in jesus name and so we're talking particularly now i've told you i've cited many examples of many children i've told you about joseph i've told you about samuel i've told you about david i've told you about um, about jeremiah and now we're talking particularly about timothy because timothy was young and yet he knew the lord he knew the lord and he was trained he was prepared for the work of the lord in um, second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 from verse 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus you see it tells us very clearly that timothy knew the word of god from a child he knew the holy scriptures and that these scriptures they are able to make him wise unto salvation even when he started serving the lord he had been chosen to be a pastor and was preaching already he was still not very old let me show you in first timothy chapter one first timothy chapter one before i read chapter four to you look at verse three chapter one verse three as i besought thee to abide still at ephesus when i went into macedonia that thou mightest chant some that they teach no other doctrine paul the apostle left timothy in ephesus he was to take care of that church in ephesus he was to develop that church in ephesus he was to teach he was to preach he was to train he was to develop he was to counsel he was to guide he was to pray he was to minister to the church in ephesus at that time i was seeing an aged man no not at all look at chapter 4 now verse 12 let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example to the believers of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity he was still young but please understand because you see we have to balance up the scriptures 
when I said he was still young, the experts in the study of the original language in the Bible, and those who have read all the uh, writings of that time, they tell us that at this time, that Timothy was between 30 and 36 years of age when he was pastoring the church at Ephesus. So it's not like when we say young people or we say youth, it's not like 12 years of age pastoring the church in Ephesus. No, not at all. It's not like 17, 18 years of age pastoring the church at Ephesus. Uh, they, they tell us, those who have studied, that he was at that time between the age of 30 and 36. Because Paul, the apostle himself, was about the age of 66 at that time about 30 years older than timothy and therefore he knew that timothy as a son as a young fellow and he said you are young when you compare 30 years of age with 60 or 66 when you compare 36 with 66 you are young but let no man despise thy youth as a young fellow growing up not having too much experience in fact, a little bit timid. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in words, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in doctrine, in purity, in everything, in lifestyle. Now, as we talk about training the Timothys, because you understand, the Timothy we have read about here, he has already gone to heaven. But the others remaining, there are still Samuels here, children. There are still Davids here, children. There are still Josephs here, children. And there are still Jeremiah's here, children. There are still Timothy's here, children. And as we look at these children, young people, youth, we want to talk about their training so that as we train them they will be involved in the service of the lord but we need to understand that we're not just gathering all the timothys and the josephs and the samsons and everybody together just train them whether they are born again or not point number one salvation before training for service salvation before training for service we need to understand that um, children need the lord children need the gospel and we cannot just say okay uh, we want to train those young people they're going to serve the lord they're going to do this in the church they're going to do that in the church no salvation before training for service in matthew chapter 15 matthew chapter 15 reading from verse 14 let them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch whether adults or children whether young adolescents the youth or growing men and women we cannot make the blind to lead the blind and so you cannot just get back into your school and in the school fellowship there just uh, pick up anyone and say they're all timothys and they're all young people we want them to serve the lord and as we want them to serve the lord whether born again or not born again whether they are converted or not converted whether they have change of life or no change of life whether they are living in sin or they know the savior we say well we don't want to think about that now we want all the young people to serve the lord and uh, you say well you want your own children too to serve the lord that uh, although you know that your child is still stealing although you know that your child is still messing up his life and having immorality you say well uh, we have been told we need to allow these children to serve the lord no the blind will not lead the blind the sinner will not lead the sinner to the savior and uh, the ignorant will not teach the ignorant the one that is still fighting and quarreling 
and the one that is still smoking and drinking among those children we cannot make them to get up put the bible in their hand tell them to teach other people no they must be saved they must be born again there must be evidence of conversion before they are involved in the service of the lord in first samuel chapter 2 first samuel chapter 2 reading from verse 12 now the sons of eli were sons of belial they knew not the lord and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething and with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand and he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself so they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came see them also before they burnt the fat the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed give flesh to roast for the priest for he will not have sodden flesh of thee but raw and if any man said unto him let them not fail to burn the fat presently and then take as much as thy soul desireth then he will answer him nay but thou shalt give it me now and if not i will take it by force wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the lord for men abhorred detested hated the offering of the lord you see here eli was the high priest and he put his children in in the priesthood these children were not living right these children were not behaving well these children did not show any evidence of salvation any evidence of conversion any evidence of the life of a fellow serving the lord and yet eli put them there just to put his own children in the priesthood he didn't correct them hard enough he didn't lead those children first to repentance and that was wrong in fact the lord condemned him and judged him and judged those children concerning this sin look at verse 29 wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering which i have commanded in mine habitation and honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of israel my people eventually judgment came upon him and came upon those children we learned something here before we put any child before we put any young boy girl into the service of the lord in any capacity whatever we must lead them to repentance lead them to salvation and there must be definite experience and definite evidence of salvation in the life of that child if not we're going to incur upon us the judgment of the lord sometimes the parents may even be good people sometimes the parents may be serving the lord real children of god but one way or the other either because they neglected the lives of those children because they didn't have impact in the lives of the children the children become wayward they are not born again they are not living right and we will still not have any right to put those children in the service of the lord just because they are coordinators children pastors children or they are women leaders children or they are overseers children if they are not born again they cannot be put into the service of the lord 
and we cannot in our school fellowship just say all right uh, this boy will be leading the bible study in the fellowship because after all his father is a preacher his father is a preacher is he born again is he a child of god is he converted does he have a genuine experience of salvation is he a new creature are all things passed away are all things become new we must make sure that before those children are involved in the christian work either in the school or in their uh, success home uh, fellowship we must make sure that they are born again look at first samuel chapter 8 first samuel chapter 8 from verse 1 and it came to pass when samuel was old that he made his sons judges over israel now the name of his firstborn was joel and the name of his second abiah they were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment then all the elders of israel gathered themselves together and came to samuel unto raman and he said unto him behold thou art old thy sons walk not in thy ways now make us a king to judge us like all the nations samuel was a good man but although he was a good man he didn't have time for his children and he never did anything with his children he didn't pray with them he didn't treat the scriptures with them he didn't teach them the way of the lord he only felt that since i'm a prophet and since i'm a good man and since i'm an effective leader and my children are there he put those children there without making sure those children had a change of life and because of that the children of israel had problem so they came unto him they said look at your sons they are there they take bribes they love money they misbehave they twist matters they tell lies that's changing things deceiving people perverting judgment and therefore you know they are not good although they are children they have not taken after you therefore give us a king that will judge us like other nations and therefore we really need to make sure that these children before they get involved they must be born again in acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 now some of our children they may know the right thing to say they may know some verses of scripture but they are not born again they may be able to tell what salvation is all about a little child who has been staying with you know some christian people for a long time will be able to say all i've seen and come short of the glory of god that little child might be able to say we cannot save ourselves that little child might be able to say that there is no salvation in any other except the name of jesus that little child may be able to say behold the lamp of god that takes away the sins of the world that little child may even be able to say if any man is in christ is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things have become new he may quote that he may say that that's not enough is he born again and if you know that you have a child that although this child is able to repeat some verses of scripture is able to tell how to be born again may even mention holiness and sanctification may not may even be a girl that is not using jewelry and a girl that is not um, going into the things of the world but the child is not born again you will recognize it and you will make sure that you do not allow that child to step into the ministry teaching other people praying for other people leading other people singing in the youth choir singing in the children's choir because the child is not ready for that yet until the child is born again look at acts chapter 16. acts 
chapter 16 from verse 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel that means a certain girl teenager young girl youth a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination metals which brought her masters much gain by so saying here we find a girl a damsel young lady here we find one of the youth but female and this a girl had an evil spirit a spirit of divination a spirit of soothsaying a spirit of fortune telling a spirit of uh, predicting this and predicting that a spirit that knows beyond the average normal sense knowledge a spirit that goes beyond just knowing two and two makes four that child had a way of knowing something apart from the natural thing what did she say look at verse 17 the same the same girl the same the same damsel the same youth followed paul and us and cried saying these are the men servants these men are the servants of the most high god which show us the way of salvation look at the message look at what she said analyze it it appears correct on the surface it appears acceptable as message he said these men pointing to paul and Silas, these men, he said, these men are not ordinary. That's correct. He said, these men are not like every dick and Harry on the street. That's correct. He said, these men are special men. That's correct. He said, these men are the servants of the Most High God. He said, there is a God in heaven. It's the Most High God. If you look at the Old Testament, and you look at the names of God, you will find that one of the favorite ways of referring to God in the Old Testament is the Most High God. When um, Abraham was coming back from the battle and he met Melchizedek, do you know what Melchizedek called God? Yes, the Most High God. Look at this girl using the language of Melchizedek and telling everybody he said these men are the servants of the most high God and then we show unto us the way of salvation he brought the knowledge of the Old Testament and he brought the presentation of grace in the New Testament joined everything together he said salvation is coming from the most high God they are showing us the way now you all think that's good that this girl already was serving the lord but paul knew that she had no business saying what she said it wasn't right for her she wasn't born again she wasn't a child of god she wasn't a new creature in christ and therefore she shouldn't have taken the word of the lord in her mouth and pointing out that these men are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation now look at that sentence again everything is correct except one or two words very small words let me read that verse now just that sentence i'm going to remove two words there i'm going to remove unto us i'm going to read the rest i will remove those words unto us and remove and remove that and read the rest these men and the servants of the most high god which show the way of salvation that's correct but then when you put unto us we'll have to ask the question unto us who because you see that girl had evil spirit familiar spirit spirit of divination and when you normally listen to the language of the people that have evil spirit when they say us 
when they refer to themselves like that they're not just referring to the human being don't you know when jesus came to that uh, demoniac that demoniac said what have we done and why have you come here to torment us the us there is referring to the evil spirits the us there why have you come to torment us before the time this is not the time and then jesus said what is your name and the man when he replied he didn't give his literal local name he didn't give his hebrew jewish name he gave the name of the us within we are legion because we are many that's the us now paul and silas did not come to show unto the spirits living inside her the way of salvation there's no salvation for the demons there's no salvation for familiar spirit there is no salvation for those evil things there is salvation for the girl there's salvation for the boy there's salvation for the men there's salvation for the women but there's no salvation for the evil spirit living in them the only thing we have to do with that evil spirit is cast it out and when you cast out that evil spirit and that girl is now alone you minister to that girl and that girl can be saved there's salvation for her there's no salvation for the spirit of divination i said you understand now look at verse 18 and this she did many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit he didn't talk to her talk to the spirit which means it was the spirit speaking from within i command thee in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour well we have to deliver those children first get them saved before they get into the service get them delivered before they get into the service don't allow any child that has familiar spirit mommy water spirit that has witchcraft that has any occultic thing don't allow any child that uh, we know is uh, destroying other children introducing evil spirit sharing evil spirit and advertising evil spirit passing on evil spirit to all the children don't allow them to be in the choir don't allow them to say they're doing anything in the church it's not for them they will be delivered first they will come to repentance they will burn all the instruments they'll be using there will be clear evidence that that child had been saved had been delivered is not living a new life a different life has no connection anymore with all those evil spirits not going to any meeting in the night anymore not practicing any magical thing occultic thing evil thing anymore and the life is straightforward and it's a real child of god before that child can be allowed to be in the ministry of the youth and of the children salvation before training for service point number two spiritual life and study of scripture in preparing children and youth for service here is the next thing we need to take care of we make sure they are born again make sure they are children of god and then number two spiritual life and study of scripture in preparing those children and the youth for service now how do we know that these children are born again because you know there are some adults that say that well if children are born again how are you ever going to know because you see these are just innocent children and uh, some people will even say well the salvation of children uh, is different from the salvation of adults and uh, some people will tell you that i think these children are saved I, although they still tell lies but uh, you, you, they say that's common for all children no if a child is saved you will know by the lifestyle by the fruit by the character of that child that child will have spiritual life in proverbs chapter 20 proverbs chapter 20 reading from verse 11 even a child is known by his doings whether his works be pure 
or whether it be right. A child will be known by his doings, whether the work be pure and whether it be right. So then we will look at the character of the children, the lifestyle of the children, spiritual life of those children and those young people before getting them involved so that we're not getting sinners involved in the ministry in leading others in isaiah chapter 63 isaiah 63 verse 8 for he said surely they are my people children that will not lie so he was their savior he was their savior they had been saved and one is what is the uh, one of the fruits and one of the marks you see in those children when they are really saved children that will not lie oh yes of course they are children those children they can uh, they can make mistakes i'm not talking of committing sin that uh, you say uh, they should put something in a particular place and those children, because they are children, when you are given the instruction, they didn't listen attentively. And uh, you say, do you understand? Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. And they have run off. And then now, uh, what you told them to do, they came back, they did the different thing. And they put something that in the wrong place. That's a mistake. That's because that little child, uh, because of the weakness of little children, frailty of little children, they didn't pay attention to listen to the details of what we have said. But, when you now said, who put this in here? If that child is really born again, if that child is really a child of God, that child is not going to tell you a lie, even though he sees a stick in your hand, even though he knows you are going to rebuke him, even though he knows you are going to say, but what I told you is, this is what you will do. And therefore, the child will say, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you told me to do. I'm the one that put it there. Then you know that although he put that object in the wrong place, the very fact that this child is telling you the truth, he will not tell a lie. No matter what you are going to do to that child, that child is going to tell you, I am the one that put it there. Don't punish so-and-so. Don't accuse so-and-so. I am the one that did that wrong thing. It's not living in sin, it's not smoking, it's not drinking, it's not uh, fighting, and it's not doing anything that is wrong on that line, immorality. But you see, there are some little, little, little things he may, he may do. He's, uh, you know, he's born again. But born again children, if you see them for 30 minutes, they get tired. And when they get uh, tired... Uh, they are, uh, if you are not around, they are going to take a little thin ball. And uh, if there are two or three at home and you are not there, they are going to say stand there and I will stand here. The problem is that they didn't uh, take note that your cupboard there that has glass is by the side of where he told them to stand. But because that's a child, the child will only think of, I need to exercise my body and my bones now. And they therefore say, stand there, born again child. And then I kick it to you, kick it to me, and you kick it, uh, then you kick it. And while they are kicking and kicking, it struck that glass, everything is shattered and broken. But they are born again. Broken glass does not mean they are not born again. Because it is not that he rose up and said, what will I do to mama today? I think I'll break this thing. That's wickedness. But this one, because he's a little child, he was tired of reading and tired of uh, doing something. Therefore, he said, what will I do? Started kicking and nothing is broken. But a child that is born again, he'll say, this is serious. This is terrible. It's going to be something today. And mama is going to say, I know he's going to punish me for this. And so that child will know, but I'm born again. I cannot tell a lie. I cannot say it is so and so that did it or we don't know. We, we just came in. Maybe it's the maid because uh, we just came in and we saw it like that. A born again child will not tell a lie. Those children, if they are wise, 
they will not tell they will not tell lies while mama is coming from uh, you know the market or somewhere they run out oh mama welcome welcome how are you and while mama is uh, you know before she enters and uh, before mama sees the thing a safe child of god will say mama i did something i don't know whether you will forgive me oh you are a nice child what will you do that i will not forgive it's a serious matter mama i really did something and uh, in fact i don't know how you will feel i wish that thing had not been done mama said what is this thing that you have done oh mama you'll be surprised when you see the thing will you forgive me and uh, mama will without knowing what happened says well by the grace of god i'll forgive you uh, what if i told you that uh, <laughs> something that is very serious well since you are telling me and you are the one telling me i will forgive you in fact i'm so shocked myself what is this thing that you have done well something there <laughs> it's broken already what's the something there let me take you there and see and then she pulls mama's hand and you know there before and mama said watch and the child said, but you said you will forgive me. The child will not tell a lie. He will say, we were the people that did it. We, we, we got tired. We were playing football. And you know, we got tired and that thing was, and we feel so sorry about it. And uh, in fact, I know you should, I should be punished. Because I know this thing costs money. But uh, if you could forgive me like you promised, I'll be happy. And so mama said, this thing is bad. Yes, I know. All right. Since I'm a Christian, I said, I said I will forgive you. Don't do that again. You see, the child will not tell a lie, but the child will know how to behave, how to do things, but the child is going to make mistakes. And you see, we need to tell our children. We need to train them. We tell them, you are born again. You are children of God. Never tell a lie. Now that you tell me you are born again, anything you do, just come and tell me that this is what I did. And this is a thing that went wrong. Don't let me hear it outside. Don't let me hear it from another person. You are training up that child to keep the salvation and to keep the Christian experience. And so then, we learn that when children are born again, we will know they are born again because they are uh, living lives that are different from the lives of the rest of the other children. Now, we train them. How do we train them? Well, you know how we train little children. Number one, your own example. That is the greatest training model we can use for our children. Let them know that you love the Lord. They will love the Lord. Let them know that you read the Bible. They will read the Bible. Let them know that you are prayerful and uh, they will be prayerful. Let them know that you love evangelism. You are reaching out. You are telling other people and that your family is an evangelizing family. Bringing people to the Lord. And those children, they are going to follow after your example. You see, children, they learn by what they see. Therefore, if you make them to see the right thing, that's what they're seeing. Every time, will be acting as training for them. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading to you from verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Now you see Paul the Apostle was telling timothy he said timothy you know what you have to do be an example to the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity but now he tells us how those characteristics and qualities would have been formed in him he tells us in this chapter 3 verse 10 of second timothy he said timothy i've been training you and the method of training is that I have made you to see. I have made you to know. I have made you to observe the doctrine I teach. 
And therefore now, Timothy, you have fully known my doctrine. You have fully known my manner of life. You have fully known my purpose, my motive, the thing that drives me. You have fully known my faith. You have fully known my long-suffering charity and patience. Now he told Timothy, you have seen the model. You have seen the standard. You have seen the picture. You have seen the lifestyle. You have seen it in me. And he became the model for that child. Became a model for that young fellow. You see, that's what we are to do too. We are to make sure that in our training of the children, yes, we teach them the word of God. We have systematic curriculum for them in the things that we are teaching them. And we ourselves, we are involved in that thing. And we give encouragement to those children. And they see those things in our own lives. And then they'll be able to pass it on. They'll be useful in the house of the Lord. Uh, there's no time because our time is running out. Uh, you can read on your own uh, Philippians chapter 2. Verses 19 and 22. Just write that down. I go to point number 3 now. Scriptural service for trained Timothys. Scriptural service for trained Timothys. That means the Timothys, the young people in your school. The young people in your local church. The young people in your town. The young people, you are leading them to salvation. You are leading them to the Lord. And now from leading them to the Lord, you are leading them and training them into the service of the Lord. What are the areas of service that those children can take part in? Areas of service that the children and the youth can take part in. Let's look at Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord gave that commission to all people that knew him as Savior, as Master, as Lord. And if there are children, and if there are young people that know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, as Master, as Lord, this great commission is also given unto them. That these children are to go into their own world. The world of children. They go to primary schools. They are playmates. They are classmates. They know the Lord. And if there is anything they need to talk about, they will talk about Christ. They will talk about salvation in Christ. They will talk about the grace of God. There are other little children in primary school who do not know the Lord. They talk about what they are interested in. The other little children at school, they talk about games. They talk about football. They talk about fighting between mommy and daddy. To their little, to the little children, the, their peer group. They talk about immorality. They talk about what goes on on their street. They talk about smoking, drinking, what the other children are doing. They talk about their teachers. They talk about the things that interest them. As sinners, those evil things interest them. As children who are born again. As children who know the Lord. They are no more interested in what a teacher has done that is bad. They are not more, no more interested in what a boys and girls are doing on their street that is evil. They are now interested in Christ. They love Jesus. They know Jesus. They have experienced the salvation of the Lord. While the other children are talking about what interests sinners, they are talking about the things that interest believers. Therefore, we train them that they are to evangelize. They ought to preach the gospel. They ought to tell little children like themselves at school, in their community, or in the same house where they are living. The other children that do not know the Lord, they will preach salvation message to those children. That's part of serving the Lord. Not only that, they tell their testimonies. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 19, 
how be Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and has had compassion on thee. That's part of the ministry of children too. If those children have been healed by the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, by the healing virtue in Christ in Jesus, then those children healed, delivered, set free, they will be telling their friends, they will be telling young people like themselves that they have been healed, they have been delivered, they have known the Lord and the power of the Lord. And we are to train them to do it. We are to train them to get it done. How do they give their testimonies? How do they challenge young people like themselves? That is what they are to do. In Proverbs chapter 27. And in verse 17. Proverbs 27 verse 17. Iron sharpness iron. So a man, a man sharpened the countenance of his friends. Now, iron sharpness iron. Have you ever realized when you want to sharpen a little knife, you take a little file, you use a little file to sharpen a little knife. Have you noticed when you want to sharpen a cutlass, you don't take that uh, little uh, tiny file to sharpen a cutlass. You take a bigger cutlass to a bigger iron to sharpen a cutlass. Have you noticed when you want to sharpen the instruments that you are using in the factory? Very big, uh, gigantic uh, instrument, machine that you are using in the factory. How do you sharpen the blade of that gigantic uh, machine? You don't take a little file to do that. You don't take uh, the file you use, which is even still bigger, that you use for sharpening the cutlass. There will be a bigger kind of file that will sharpen that gigantic machine you have in the factory. Then when it says iron sharpness iron, that means these little little ones that are born again they encourage themselves therefore a little child that is born again will be able to sharpen the countenance of another little child that, that is born again that is they will be teaching one another they will be counseling one another they will be helping one another it's like a little knife being sharpened by a little file and uh, that's what uh, we have tried to uh, do here. I told you the other time that uh, our young people, we get them trained. And um, some of those children have been uh, talking to me when they have the chance. They don't always have the chance, but once in a while uh, they have a chance. And uh, when they have the chance and they talk to me and they ask me questions, and uh, I don't say, shut up, you're a little child. Uh, why are you asking me that? Don't you know that I am the pastor of Deeper Life Bible Church? No. When a little child talks to me, I talk back to that little child as a little child. A mother came to see me. And uh, this mother came with uh, the children. And I said, uh, one of the, those children who is now about uh, perhaps um, 18 or 17 or 18. And uh, when those uh, children came with the mother, I said, oh children, have I met you before? And uh, so the mother said, my children have always been saying, take us to the pastor, we want to see him, we want to talk to him. And so I said, what's your name? And that one told me, I said, in what class are you? And then I said, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? And uh, the last one, that's the oldest of them, about maybe 17 or 18. Then I mentioned the name. I said, you are so and so. And so the mother said, you still remember the name of this boy? Because I saw that boy when that boy was about six years of age. And I'd known the name of that boy at that time. And, you know, I'd ministered to that boy at that time. And about 10, 12 years have passed now. And now the child came, so I just mentioned the name, I said, you are so and so, what class are you now? So the mother said, you still remember this child? I said, yes, I have heart for children, I remember the child. 
And so when we finish all our discussion, uh, the child, that's the oldest one, and the one I mentioned, the name said, um, Pastor, I want to ask you a question. So I said, go ahead. He said, it appears that uh, you don't uh, love us children anymore. The mother said, shut up. <laughs> you talk to our pastor like that. That's what I've been telling you. We come over here, see how you are talking to us. I said, uh, Mama, you are the one to shut up. <laughs> Let the boy talk. And so the boy was happy, and the boy said, uh, ah, Why is it all this uh, year now? We have not seen you, and we have been waiting, and we're waiting for announcement uh, to have our revival service. And uh, you know, we hear that your travel here, your travel there, all these adult, adult, adult people. What have we done? So I said, I understand. That let me explain to you. And you know, I just uh, started, I said, Look at January. We had the leadership congress. I gave him the date. And then I said, look at uh, January again. We had singles uh, seminar. And I was involved. And you know, it also included Sunday in it. I said, look at February. We had uh, women, the uh, sisters who are single. And we had a program for them. I said, uh, that same January I went to, I told him I was in Kaduna State. I was in Port Harcourt. I went for uh, those uh, meetings. Uh, workers retreat i said when march came we were here for a uh, easter retreat and then in may i went to ghana and then i told him all my programs what i did and the child said yes we understand now it is not that you don't love us anymore we see you are very busy but when are you going to finish all these things you are talking about so that we can start a revival hour again and I said, I'm working it out where when we get started, it's going to be a wonderful time. You know, the, the children were happy because, you know, I didn't say, well, child, you will not understand. But pastor is very busy. Uh, but uh, when it comes time, I'll, I would uh, come back. To, no, I explained everything to the child. And uh, the children were very happy. And I said, uh, before you go, what are we going to pray for? What prayer request do you have? And I said, uh, you know, tell me, you tell me, you tell me. And we had a good time together. And we prayed and then they were happy and they went. Uh, you see, when you deal with children like that, and you talk to them like little children, they are able to encourage little children like themselves because you are showing them the method, you are showing them the pattern of how to get it done. Iron sharpness iron little iron sharpness little iron little fire will sharpen little knife therefore let us encourage these children that they can counsel one another over here in lagos we had a program say uh, with the children we brought them over here and we prepared them to teach the bible studies themselves and to give some of the major messages themselves and sometimes we have what we call success camp and we get them involved as well and um, during these uh, holidays uh, the youth choir here we uh, did something i had a program in togo and uh, you know in togo it's a french speaking country and i told the choir master i said we have a program in togo and i would like to give opportunity to a few of those in the youth uh, choir to follow me to togo so that uh, they will go and uh, see why not if uh, nigeria is sending them to america why can't we send them to togo and uh, so we, they went before me and they got other children there and they practiced with them and they talked together, they interacted together, they became an inspiration to the children over there. And then when they finished, they came over here, they are serving the Lord. I said, well, it's not, uh, we have not finished, I have a program in uh, Cameroon, you on holidays. If those children are just left like that, they will be running about playing football and breaking glasses and causing trouble. I said, don't play football, let me give you better thing to do, let's go to Cameroon. And they were in Cameroon together, and those people in Cameroon, these children, they sang in French. They sang in English, and those French people, they didn't know that the children didn't understand everything they were singing. Because, uh, you know, uh, they just taught them the French thing, how to pronounce it, also, and they sang it like professional French uh, singers. And those uh, French people were saying, ah, these uh, Anglophone uh, children, see what they are doing. 
we're getting our children involved they they have no time for the devil they have no time for evil things and we came back on Tuesday and you will remember I was coming from the airport we all came back we were at the airport together and I left them at the airport and I ran over here with the same dressing I came back from Cameroon uh, to come and preach here that night and when I was sitting here they had arrived from the airport those who went and they had uh, without uh, even thinking we are children we want to eat we are hungry or anything straight from the airport they joined the choir here when the children were going to sing for the first message, all those from Cameroon, they just joined them. Those who were playing from Cameroon, they just went on the keyboard and started playing and started singing. And we still had a service together that night. They came back from Cameroon. They have not branched at home. They just came to the IBTC and they are still here. And when they finish uh, this week, we have women's conference next week. They are going to be here for the women's conference. Children, youth young people they are getting involved already how about your own children how about children in your school how about young people in your region are they going to remain like that playing tricks all about serving the devil getting into trouble why don't you train them up so that they can do something for the lord these children if we train them these young people if we train them they'll take this country for the lord are we ready to sacrifice and train them? Are we ready to get them involved? Are we ready to make them serve the Lord in the days of their youth so that they will not regret? Are you ready to bring your own children? Let them be born again. Let them be saved. Let them be involved in the service of the Lord. Other children are doing it already. Your own children, your own students, the young people in your local church, the young people in your region, the young people in your state, and the young people in your nation, we are waiting for them. They can take part in it. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, we will train the Timothys. We will train the Samuels. We will train the Davids. We will train the Josephs. We will train the Medes. We will train the Mistrails. We'll train the girls and the boys, the young people. They will serve the Lord. They will serve the Lord. They will serve the Lord. Train up these little children in the way they should go. When they get old, they will not depart from it. Get them to salvation before you get them into service. Get them to salvation before you get them into the service. Let the children be born again. Preach to them. Love them, counsel them, pray with them, and as they get saved, teach them how to give their testimony, teach them how to lead others to salvation, teach them how iron sharpness iron, how to counsel others, how to edify others, how to build up others, how to encourage others, how to exhort others. How to help others to know the Lord and to be firm in the Lord. Teach them how to overcome temptation. Teach them how to overcome persecution. Let the children in your school get involved. Have a strong school fellowship in the school where you are teaching. Train up those children. Train up those young people. Don't let them run away to the world. Don't let them run away to football, to game, to Atlanta, to Olympics. Keep them from the work and the ministry of the Lord. Spend your time on them. Spend your money on them. Spend your energy on them. Concentrate on them. If you love them now, if you teach them now, if you train them now, you'll be preparing them for the future. If Jesus tarries, get involved yourself. Look at that school fellowship. Get involved. Look at the SHSF. Get involved. Look at the children's church get involved those groups of primary school children in the school where you are teaching get involved 
Let them be saved. Let them be saved. Let there be the evidence of salvation. And then train them up. Train them up. Train them up to get involved in the service 